I forgot one more thing I wanted to say because I'm kind of proud of this uh, about the eighth grade. When I was in eighth grade one time, I forgot. I don't know when it happened. I forgot. But I was always, you know, quick to eat my lunch and then go to the gym. And there was very few people in there this time, maybe like 10 to 15 people tops. And I was bored. So I just grabbed a basketball and I was standing around about half court, maybe even a little further back or so. I was bored. So I kicked the basketball and I made it first try. And then after that, I kept trying to kick balls again to try to make it again. And then the teacher told me not to in the gym, whatever. So whatever. Anyway, so then the summer of that year, after my first, you know, year of school in Oklahoma, uh, summer of 05, I had my first job because I got in so much trouble with school in eighth grade, the guidance counselor recommended me and I got the job summer program for troubled youth. So they stay out of trouble and they don't get in trouble in the summer. So I was working at the mission and that was fun, except for the two people. There was a married couple in there. Then everyone there was strictly volunteer. It was basically, it's very, it's still open to this day. And the people I still talk to that run it and own it, Gary and June, and they're really nice people. And, you know, and it's a nonprofit organization. Everyone there is strictly volunteer. No one gets paid a dime. All the money goes on the mission to the proceeds to, you know, feed the homeless and hungry. And so that was a really cool job. It actually changed my life about how, you know, I stopped becoming so angry and I started learning the value of a dollar and I started changing everything a lot. And then when I went into high school, after I, had, I went to alternative school and I got into this beef with this kid, Aaron Coburn. He was a bully. He was a so-called wannabe gangster or whatever. He started talking crap to me one day. So we got in a beef. He threw scissors and it hit me right in the face. And, you know, the sharp part did. I felt it. And he only got suspended. He didn't get expelled. He should have got expelled from alternative and not even allowed to go to the high school. But the principal was scared of him. He even said he was scared of him. He made a comment like, you know, that kid's, you know, such and such. And I forgot exactly his words, but I remember he said he was scared of him. And it was bull crap. And I had witnesses that said he threw scissors at me and everything. And he only got suspended. What the hell? And uh, anyway, so we ended up going to, we all, I guess, passed our test that we had to, the English test or whatever test we had to take, which held us back from accomplishing eighth grade to go to ninth. So then we all went to ninth grade. We had some of the same classes together. He tried to bully me in that class, and I stood up to him, and I got in a fight with him, and yes, I got my butt kicked. And everyone else was still, you know, trying to assault me and bully me as well, and everyone was scared of them. So I dropped out and decided it'd be better for me to work. After that... I was 16 and I started working, uh, not long later, a few months later. I was working for the city. I was basically a janitor, like, you know, just cleaning up four days a week. And, um, I was taking GED classes at the time so I could keep the job so I can work. And I ended up doing, uh, the same job for like six months. It was the same Monday through Thursday routine. There's only like four or five guys besides me. I was 16 years old. I was bored. I was, so I did stuff that I wasn't not proud of to this day, but you know, I was 16. I went and started taking dumps in the woman's bathroom because there was only men that ever worked there the whole six months. There was only one time that a female was there. That was when they had Christmas dinner for the, for the workers. And that was the only time in six months. And then he caught me in the bathroom and he fired me because he warned me about it. And it's like, I'm not going to take a dump. And then you guys come in, smell me taking a dump and make fun of me. I was shy. So, you know, I get fired for that. And he said my work was lacking. You know, of course, my work wasn't the best as it was in the beginning because I'm trying to do my best to impress. And then later on, you know, instead of him telling me, he doesn't. He just fires me. And uh come to find out later on, I ended up like a week later or two, worked at, started working at KFC. When I worked at KFC, I only lasted there for a week because I did not like the job because it was way too hectic. And I mean, way too much for a 16 year old to sit there and, you know, have to take the order then make the order clean up and do everything and run everything they expected way too much from a teenager and uh you know i just wanted to be a kid again that's what made me go crazy and the first day when i was working at kfc this black dude i'm not i'm not racist i just don't know his name this one guy he walks in a female's restroom no one's in the male's restroom but he walks in the female's restroom with a toilet with a newspaper to take a dump i was like i think i just got fired for that crap and now he's doing it at a restaurant you know, I was like, I did it because there was no females around ever. But he's doing it, and that's just stupid. So I got kind of mad. But uh anyways, I ended up quitting that job by that end of that week because it was way too hectic. The last day I was there, there was a long line of people on Friday for a uh, evening or whatever, dinner rush. And there was a lot of people I took all their orders because I was so busy. And then they tell me, well, you're supposed to make all their food too. No one ever told me that. So I ended up leaving. I was thinking, I'm not coming back. And I never did. 
Anyways, then after that, I worked, I decided after that, after KFC failed, I was like, I want to go back to school. So I already set up and talked and went and did everything I was supposed to. So I made up all the plans and arrangements and everything to go back to school. So when I ended up going back uh, to school, I had to wait for the rest of that year to end because there's only like a month or two left and I had to wait for the summer. So in the summer, I ended up working at Enrique's. And that same summer, we also, I worked there for, you know, for like a month, a month and a half. And then I ended up quitting right after because he wouldn't let me take and go on a mission trip with our youth at our church at the time. We went to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we did a lot of volunteer work. We stayed out of church for like four or five days, three or five days or something like that. It was a few days. We did a lot of volunteer works, helping people with their gardens for the parks and other things and helping people in shelters and missions and feeding the homeless and all kinds of other stuff. It was pretty cool. And then we went to Big Splash or something like that. It was or something, something like that. Big Splash kind of fun, something like that. And, uh, and then we went to, uh, this one place, Castle, Castle Town or, or some weird thing. It's like a Chuck E. Cheese, but it's way bigger. But, you know, when I was a kid, I remember Chuck E. Cheese being way funner and way bigger too than, than that place. And then we went to Chuck E. Cheese as adults. It's like, like 10% of what I remember the size and only less than, less than half the fun. It's like just a, portion of the fun but of course you're an adult compared to a kid so things are way bigger as a kid and then they're way more funner when you're a kid too so yeah anyways then uh i ended up going back to school when i got back to school uh i ended up quitting enrique's so i could go on a mission trip and then i ended up going back to school i was a 17 year old freshman i had no credits and i had the strict thing i cannot I get strict contract i cannot get in trouble at all if i get in any serious trouble i'm expelled so, there was the principal, Mr. Munger, and then there was the fifth period teacher that I had, Mr. Ladner. He was a big guy, about 6'1", six 6'2", six six about 400 pounds. I'm serious. At the very least, 350 to 400. And he was a big guy, and he didn't like me. I was always a clown in his class and other classes, and, you know. And, um, anyways, so when I went back to school, I ended up expelled. This I got, got expelled the very last day of the first try. But because the second to last day of that very first try in Ladner's class, some classmates took a paper clip, stuck it to a nitzel, uh, they stuck the paper clip through a pencil eraser, and they told me to stick it in a light socket. They dared me, didn't think I would. Ha ha, jokes on them, I did. Anyways, and so when I was sticking it in the light socket, nothing happened at first. I was trying to get it in, nothing happened. And then they kept laughing and telling me not to do it, and stop, stop, they're just kidding. Then I was like, no, I have to see this through. I want to see what happens when I, you know, do it. And, um, so when I stuck it through though, the, um, this big old fireball just, poof, and it came right at me, right at my face and everything. So then I immediately turn around, jump back, get in my seat. And as quick as I did that, you know, and I turned over and looked up for a second because I heard a big old commotion. I see Mr. Ladner jumping out of his seat from that big old fireball explosion. And he jumps up and he just, well, you didn't see it. Yeah, there. Anyways, he jumps up, big old, you know, fireball, and then he jumps up, and then he comes right to me, and he blames me, and he's looking at me. Give me it. Give me it. Give me whatever, whatever you did, whatever you got. Give me it. And I was acting like I was asleep. I was like, what are you talking about? And then he, he looks at me, and he's like, give it to me. Give me, give me the, whatever you did, whatever you got. And I said, I don't know what you're talking about. He looks at the class. He says, who did it? Everyone looks, points at me and laughs. So then I give it to him. I walk away. And then I ended up uh, going to see the principal, but the principal for our grade wasn't there. So I talked to this other principal, Woody or whatever his name is, or someone else, Marshall or something. And he was like a junior or a senior principal. But he talked to me and after talking to him. He said, well, I see you're, you know, seem sorry and remorseful. He said, so if it was up to me, I'll talk to Mr. Munger. I'll see if we can get you maybe a week or two of in-school detention starting the first day of next try. And I was like, okay, that's cool, fine. And, you know, thought I could come back and hang out for another, you know, couple months and hang out with my friends and, you know, be a kid. But instead, no, uh, I pretty much had expected anyways that Mr. Munger didn't like me, that he wanted me gone. So as soon as the next day came, the last day of the try, first Period. He calls me to the office. I go to him. He said, you know, and I said, yep. And then I got up, walked away. I wasn't going to beg. I wasn't going to plead. I wasn't going to, are you sure there's nothing I can do? Blah, blah, blah. No, I don't care. It's like, damn it, Bobby. And, uh, so anyways, I went home, told my dad, said I'm expelled. So I guess back to work for me. I ended up working the, that, uh, 
winter at Chili's, and that was when I ran into my old school friend, uh, well, classmate Mitchell, who told me about the computer class stories and other stuff. And so, I mean, yeah, that is basically all right there about eighth and ninth grade. And then I'll leave it at there. And when I get to my other videos, I'll talk about the jobs I had basically from 17 until such and such. And, you know, probably from, you know, the jobs I had here in Oklahoma until I moved back to California in 2011. That's what I'll do. Anyways, you all have a blessed week and God loves you all. And go tell a stranger and go tell your family you love them. And we'll tell them, tell a stranger God loves them. You know, be weird to go up to a person and say, I love you. But, you know, I, mean, I love everyone, but in a godly way, Christian way. Anyways, have a blessed week. God loves you all. I'll make another video in a couple days.